Welcome to TCP Academy. I am Mr. Wilson and today I'm going to be looking at the 2024 Agricultural Science Single Award paper. I have observed my, should I say, analytics and I realize that a whole lot of agriculture students are consuming the content, be it that the exam comes upon us on Friday. So I decided, somebody sent this paper to me recently, I decided that I'm going to be working this paper to see how best I can assist our students heading into the exam. Without further ado, let me just hop into question number six, uh, looking at beekeeping. That's one of my, uh, should I say, pet area. So I'm going to be covering it very quickly for you. And then as time progresses by about tomorrow, I'll try to answer some other questions for you. Remember to like, share, and of course, subscribe. And tell me which school you are watching the video from and on which island your school is. Let's go. Farmer Ben inherited five hectares of land in the countryside and wants to set up an apiary to produce honey for sale. So just three factors Farmer Ben must consider when setting up an apiary for his bees if he wants to maximize honey production. Now there are several things that he can do and my answer here it's a little wordy and probably more than what is requested of us because he just asks us to suggest three factors, but I've provided explanation so that if you were supposed to see this in another exam or anything like this, you'd be armed with enough information to answer the question. So number one, the location and our environment is very, very important. You want to choose a site with access to a lot of forage we're talking about flowering plants that the bee will be able to collect nectar. It must also have clean water source. Yes, the bees, they do like water. It should also be sheltered from strong wind. You don't want the bee boxes to be toppling over because it's too windy. And receive the morning sunlight. So the front of the box is expected to be oriented to the direction in which the sun rises in the morning. And this, of course, will encourage early bees activity. So they'll go out very early to get the nectar return so that, of course, the farmer will have um, a whole lot of honey maximizing the production, it says. Secondly, safety and accessibility. You'd be so surprised that bee farmers are experiencing predator larceny, which means that persons are stealing the bees, persons are stealing the honey. So safety and accessibility is very important. Ensure the apiary is safe from both, for both the bees and for people and animals in the area. That is very, very important. It should be placed away from highway traffic or where vehicles are passing by very closely, should have a good fencing. Um, it all, it's also very important that it has access where motor vehicles can reach the boxes, for example, when you're harvesting. And it should be easy, like we said, to access for maintenance and, of course, to get that nice honey to the market. Another thing is important, I know in Jamaica you are not permitted to move a bee box from one parish to another because of a foul brood disease. So you, he has to take in consideration the legal regulation and compliance. Uh, before you even start thinking about those the bee box, where can I get bees to buy from who and where can I move it to and where of course am I permitted to cite these boxes. Check local regulation. Our zoning laws regarding beekeeping, uh, some areas require registration of hive. Impose limits on number hive and all that. So he has to be very careful. Those are the three suggestions and I would have provided some amount of explanation, though that was not asked for. Farmer Ben wants to increase his honey production. He was informed that the worker bees are a critical part of the honey production process. Now, one must recall that the cast of the hive include worker bees. Those are the one, the one that most persons would have seen. They are collecting nectar, are the ones that are usually stinging you. 
And then, of course, we have the drone, which is the male, which is responsible for really fertilizing the queen. And then we have the queen that does the laying of the fertile eggs. Be reminded that the worker bee can lay eggs as well. However, the egg that the worker bee lays, um, it tends to be infertile. We are required to describe two ways in which the social activities of a worker bee would contribute to the increased honey production on the farm. Now, one social activity of the worker bee is to forage, to go out and get food. And in going out and get food, these bees usually do what we call a waggle dance or shake the abdomen, that sort of a thing, to communicate where the food can be found. Now, this type of a communication and the ability to forage allow the bees to collect as much nectar as is available based on the size of your hive, um, or one might say the density of the hive, this will of course enhance the honey production, providing that the bee can find these um, find the location for the nectar and can communicate very effectively. So they do the bee dance and they do the foraging. That is pretty much one of the social activity. Another thing outside of nursing the queen and cleaning the hive, they also perform the processing activity to remove the excess water from the nectar, thus reducing it and increasing its viscosity to ensure that it comes to that nice, uh, well-processed honey that the market requires and one that will not ferment when it gets on the shelf. Because if the honey has too much water in it, then there's a great possibility that the honey will ferment on the shelf. However, it must also be noted that the honey can also crystallize at low temperature. So let us not say that the farmer would have added sugar to the honey because we are seeing um, crystals in our honey because the, the, the area that the honey is is very, very low. I'm going to take my leaf here until we next meet. No, I have another question here. Sorry, there are other questions. Farmer Ben sells his honey to a large supermarket chain, but there are complaints about poor quality of the honey. Now, the quality of the honey can be affected most, in most cases than not by premature harvesting of the honey. Another thing that could, and when the premature harvesting of the honey, what that means is that there is too much water in the honey and this causes the honey to ferment. Another thing that could cause poor quality honey is if the farmer is not using a queen excluder, probably using a double brood or something like that are harvesting from the brood chamber and the frame has brood in it, whether it be seal or open brood, and then that now become mixed with your honey, that too can cause some poor quality honey. Contamination during processing can cause poor quality honey, um, honey not being filtered properly, water added to the honey, all those things can affect the honey production so the, the farmer is a possibility here that the farmer is not using a commercial extractor and is still squeezing that honeycomb and squeezing the honeycomb with the possibility of brood being in it that is going to affect the quality of the honey not straining the, um, the honey properly proper filtering through your cheesecloth and through your strainer that too can result in poor quality honey being on the market. We're supposed to suggest two management practices Pharma Ben can implement to prevent the uh, production of poor quality honey. One thing Pharma Ben, or the first thing I'd suggest for Pharma Ben, is for him to um, ensure, or I should go first, try to use a queen excluder. Employ the use of a queen excluder to avoid harvesting honey or frames with honey that has brood on it be it open or closed brood secondly before harvesting them honey i used to operate a, a bee farm and i could harvest within 14 days i was using shallow on the boxes and not the um the super box not the larger long shot but i was using shallow and i was able to harvest harvest a lot of honey very quickly but i was doing a test of the honey i was not waiting there um an inefficient process how did I do this to ensure that the honey is mature? My schooling taught me that if the frame is 70% seal or more, 
then it is good to harvest. If we do that drip test and no honey is dripping or nectar is dripping from the frame, it can be harvest. So we talk about the uh, percentage seal with drip test or we can use an unrefractor meter. I think it's about 18% there about. I don't remember. Don't quote me on that. If you're using an unrefractor meter to test the water content. So you can test the only using the drip test or the flash test. The percentage seal are using an unrefractor meter. Though using these will ensure that you harvest mature honey to go on the market. Another thing, use a honey extract and ensure the honey does not become contaminated during processing. And that should ensure these three measures being employed. I can assure you that the farmer will not have any problem supplying honey to his supermarket or to any of his customer providing that you would have followed all the recommended ma management practice that is outlined in beekeeping more so i know we have a really strong beekeeping uh program in jamaica so i am hoping that this is not a jamaican farmer until we next meet please be reminded what good remember to like share and subscribe i'm mr wilson and i'm out